Hello. Thanks for watching this video that will show you how to use your hi historical data and predict which of your employees are more at risk of churn and leaving your organization than others. This type of modeling is very helpful for roles that have high turnover such as sales, temporary work, or call center telesales type positions. So to get started I'm going to add a read Excel operator and I can type RE and that'll pull up read Excel and then I'm just going to wire it up to a sample data set that I have that's HR employee attrition. When I go through it I'm actually going to get to the page here and I need to change my attrition label to a binomial everybody's either yes they did leave or no they have not left and hit finish and then I'll wire that up run the results just to kind of show what's out there there's 1470 employees worth of data that I have along with many different fields that show the department they're in education level uh, their satisfaction with their job their environment their role if they're on overtime age various various information that you can pull from most HR systems so then what we want to do is select the certain attributes from all of those that we want to build in the model. In this case, I've already gone through and I've determined that age, attrition, their environmental satisfaction, job level, let me pull those over. And then if I go down, I've got the monthly income, whether they're on overtime, their relationship satisfaction, stock option flag, years at the company as well as years in current role are the fields that I want to use to build my first model. Next I'm going to go through and do a correlation matrix, add that in and I'll go ahead and wire these up and just get the results out there. Wait. All right. So now when I run this, I have the weight of the correlation, relationship satisfaction label, environment satisfaction label, very important. Job level, not as important. Age, not as important. And then the correlation matrix here shows how correlated the data is, right? So my monthly income is highly correlated to my job level. My years in current role is highly correlated to years at the company. So the data makes sense for what I pulled. So I'm going to go ahead now and build out a decision tree. So the decision tree in this case is easy for your user base to understand. That's typically why I start with those first. So I'm going to pull the model over here. And in this case for my sample, I'm going to use the Guinea index. I'm going to change my confidence level to 0.09, my minimum gain to 06, and then I've got uh, the leaf size to 4, minimum split to 8, and I'm just going to run my model. And you can see here from my tree, I have a very large tree that has been created from all of that information. So. I actually want to go back and refine this just a bit. So I'm going to add in a select by weights. And what this will do is allow me to use this weight category that we explored on the correlation matrix. And I'm going to wire that up. And inside of here, I want to say I only want to use weights that are greater than 0.5. So if I go back to my results, look at the attribute weights, you can see here, so it's not going to use any of these. It's only going to use one, two, three, these four to start with. Let's see how that works. Now I'm going to rerun my example. I have to wire up my example. So now I've got read Excel, select my attributes, run it through the correlation matrix, passing my examples into select by weights. It will then send only those fields into my decision tree and the decision tree will be built. So now I come out and my overtime pay. So I went from that very large tree down to 
a very small tree. So now let me go back, and change this to 0.3, and now my decision tree is much different. So that is one of the ways to um, explore your data, see see what's important, what's not important. And then the final piece that I'm going to add is there's a get decision tree operator that will actually tell me the path that the decision tree is going down that my operations team can actually use and my HR partners to understand which employees left and what's the reason for that. So I'm going to run this again and you can see from the tree here it's saying if you have overtime equals to no then I have 944 people that have not left the company but 110 did. If I come down the other other way and I look at my stock options are the next branch of the tree so if I have stock options and my age is over 26.5, then I'm at a low risk of attrition. If I go the other way, if I don't have stock options and my age is over 33 and my satisfaction is very low, then my relationship satisfaction is low, I have a low chance of leaving. But if my relationship satisfaction is medium, then I have a a better chance of leaving than not. Right? So that's that's how that works. So now let's look at the example set and now you can see here's the path. So I can click on attrition and get to all the yeses. So employee number one, yes they did leave and this is the path they took. They were on overtime, they did not have stock options, they were over 33 and a half years old their job satisfaction was medium and their age was under 41.5 obviously their age is here so this branch of the tree led the model to predict most most of these people that fit this path would be more likely to leave than others so that's the essential piece of, of how to start using rapid miner to build out an, an attrition model for employee churn please let me know if you have any questions Thanks for watching.